Hello and welcome to TBC News Investigates. I'm Ni Uilo. For some time now, there have been murders, lynching, mob attacks and jungle justice in Nigeria's Delta region. And in early October 2012, Nigerians woke up to discover they had lost former young citizens to the menace. On that day, River State stood still following the gruesome murders of four University of Port Harcourt undergraduates. TBC News Investigates Dan Ipui visited Bokiri village where the shocking acts took place. Port Harcourt, the largest city in Nigeria's south-south region. It is economically the fastest growing city in Nigeria, popularly referred to as the Garden City because of its well-manicured green landscape. Port Harcourt is well endowed with natural resources and infrastructure. The 2006 Nigerian census puts the population of Port Harcourt's urban area to close to 1.5 million. But the brutal murders of four undergraduates in that area have reduced that figure by four. Like every other state, pockets of violence exist that keep security operatives busy. But the incident of Friday, October the 5th, 2012, is one that will not be forgotten in a hurry by affected families. The University of Port Harcourt and the people of River State also share in the grief. A call came in from a friend, a member of my church. So she called and asked, where, where is your son? I said, he's in school. He said, okay, that somebody just called her that uh, she saw him with his uh, friends that they were Taking it that, that she now sent me the girl's number, the lady's number. So I called the girl. She said that they were going to uh, yes, that she as she was going to class. She saw where they were parading them. That they were going to kill them. I said, ah, kill them. Okay. I mean, my son had never done anything for me to worry like. You know, there are, there are like some kids are troublesome that, you know, each time you see they get into a fight or whatever. Nothing like that has ever happened. You know, he has never, he has never given me cause to, like, worry, you know. So, you know, the thought of they were going to kill them for, you know. Chiadika Biringa, Lloyd Tokumaik, Tekena Ayokana, and Ogona Obuzo were friends. First sons of their parents and students at the University of Port Harcourt. The four were also roommates at some point. They were young men with dreams and high hopes, but despite the harsh condition in that society, they were murdered at Umokri, Alo in Ikweri local government area of the state. On that fateful day, the news filled adding like a rumor, but before long confirmation came. Four families had lost their children. Although various versions of what led to their death have been told, the most commonly told story goes like this. What happened was somebody was being owed money and they went to collect the money. Now this is the story that is on ground. And in the process of the argument, some, the, the kids were accused of uh, having stolen something. And then in that process, they were killed. Now, for me, they, these are facts that the courts should bring out. What really happened and what led to the death of these children. Now, the internet age is what has given us the opportunity to record what happened to these children. So when we got to the place, you know, where we saw a lot of, you know, people gathered around. I was actually scared to go in, you know. I couldn't, but we went. I, there were army people and all that I had to walk around. My husband went in. He couldn't recognize our boy. But he had already killed them, burnt them alive, four of them. Uh, Ugona's hair was, head, you know, was bashing as in, you can see the, the what is it, the brain splattered everywhere. So I walked around, I saw my son. I, I, I couldn't do anything. 
So at that moment, I raised my hands up and I just said, Father, I thank you because your word says in every station we should give you praise. I thank you because you gave me this child. I never went anywhere to take him. You blessed me with this child. If it is your will. That was when, you know, all the people that were, that, that were there, that stood there watching. You know, the whole place was like, calm. It's like, at that point in time, they now knew these kids belonged to people. They were human beings. They were not animals. In primary school, Lloyd was a brilliant student who earned double promotion from class 4 to 6. He later attended New Covenant Secondary School Boroki Report Harcourt, where he met one of his childhood friends, the late Tekana Elkana. He later transferred to the Niger Delta Science School, where he met his roommate, soulmate and closest friend, late Ugona Obuzo. Lloyd was the winner of the third edition of a musical show for upcoming artists in the States. Uh, instead of be sleep, let it be hate, let it degrade, let it be deep. Some others should weep, some others should keep the memory of the way that I died. And maybe you change, some other can try. At least we can lie, at least we can hope, at least we can say. Tomorrow is better, it won't be today. Some other can pray, some other can fight. The wrong done to me, some other can write. Then maybe my death can save some other life. For then I would gladly give another life. Yeah, let it be worth let it be so, some other can live, let it be birth. Uh, yeah, as I am hurt, as I pass, let it be last, let it be first, yeah. Uh, don't let them forget, the only regret is that we relent, we all should repent, yeah. Uh, if I die alone, let it be more than dying alone. The reason I'm gone, the reason I'm gone, uh. Yeah. Uh. On that fateful October day in 2012, the four undergraduates were brutally beaten and paraded around the community before they were finally burnt to death over allegations of theft and later cultism. The video, which has been played as evidence more than three times before the trial court, showed how the boys begged to no avail for their lives to be spared. Immediately I saw it. I, I just couldn't rest. Um, I was so touched by it that I started to look for uh, the parents of the children. I wanted to know where uh, the thing happened so that I could physically uh, go down there. And I was able to trace uh, the parents and identify the parents. Whichever way you look at it, murder is not justified. And that's why it's a crime all over the world. Mother is a crime. Now, in this particular instance, um, the stories are here and there. Um, but it is not the story itself that is the issue. What is the issue here is that four young children, anybody's children, were murdered in broad daylight in a most horrific way. We're condemning what they, what they did in South Africa. That was exactly what they did to those, uh, to those young men. The notion that is being spread out is that, oh, these boys were cultists. Even if you think a person is a cultist, that is not the best way to handle the matter. Because to kill a person, in a way, like they say, there must be a commensurate crime. I don't think anybody died. Nobody was harmed, nobody was hurt. They were only accused of being cultists and criminals, you know, for the mere uh, 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 reason that they were accused of also stealing a laptop. You can imagine how petty the allegations were. And so whatever it was that the boys stood for, the message that goes with that is that dead men don't talk. These boys are not here to speak for themselves. So you can't even judge them. Because they were popular guys. They were growing in their music. You know, I think it's just envy. Because most of the people that killed these boys, they were, some of them were uh, bike drivers. Um, you know, one of the guys was, was a, is a book, book, book binder in uniform there. Book binder. The suspects, Lawao Shegun, ex-sergeant Lucky Oji, Ikechuko Lewis, David Chinasa Ogbada, Abiodun Yusufu, Joshua Epe, Abang Serial, 
and John Ayu are charged on four counts under the state's criminal laws. Alahaji Azan Welema, the community's traditional ruler, Ogokiro Endurance, Ozioma Abajo, and Chigozie Evans Samuel are also charged with four counts of negligence for refusing to prevent by all reasonable means when felony murder was being committed. They are currently on bail. That video clip has to be revisited. A lot of people there, their faces are still there. They are still Nigerians. So it's if we were developed to the point of having a biometric uh, identity situation and all that, it should have been easy to have arrested most of them. They get to tell us where they are coming from. And funny enough, but for the only chief, the chief of the community, Chief Hassan Welewa, <coughs> Chief Alaj Hassan Welewa, that was arrested and all that, there's no I member of our law, all the nine clans or more creepers person that was arrested. They were not part of that crowd. They were not even part of that, this thing. Nobody was charged to court apart from Chief Hassan Welewa. And his own case, everybody knows. Now he's still on court bail. No doubt, the matter is still going on. So nobody has to tell you that where this thing happened, there is no natives of Alu that stays very close there. Hundred percent people who have come to help us develop this part of the world. They bought properties, set up hostels, residential houses, and all that. It happened within their own area. We call such places satellite uh, communities in Alu, where hundred percent people came. You can't find any indigenous person there. And they, they, they live, they, they have their own uh, way of governing themselves, they have a way of managing themselves and all that, their own peculiar security. That's what this thing happened. If it has happened where you have some indigenous people and all that, only God knows whether it had it even happened at all. You not tell me the community leader as a king, you're there and something like that is happening in your domain. That <laughs> you're not aware of it, you don't know. I don't know, I'm just asking. I don't know. So if he says that, if, that, that, if he says that no, uh, no member of the Yalu community, then he knows the people that are part of it. And I don't know if you understand where I'm coming from. For somebody to say, none of my picking, they, my children know they deal, that means you know the people where they deal now. If you know exactly, you're very sure that no, nobody from Yalu is there. But whether they're strangers or whatever, it, it, it happened in your community. It, it, it's in your community for crying out loud. This is Umokure. One of the villages that make up the Alo clan. All efforts to make people around recount the experiences of October 5th, 2012 have proved abortive. They all claim they were not around when the incident took place, saying they just moved here. I'm not residing in this area, I just came to visit my friend. Oh, I just came here last year, so I wasn't around. How come everybody around here just came here? You know, the place was, according to what I heard, they said the place was kind of. Right, everyone that was here moved out. So just last day, like, by then I was in Lagos, actually. The police spokesperson in Port Accord did not speak to our crew. He said he needed clearance from his superiors to do so. Love, love changes everything. Hands and faces, earth and sky. Changes everything how you live and how you die. Painful as this incident was to the families and the community, there is still no closure three years since the incident. The perpetrators are yet to be brought to justice. The client we took to represent is called Mr. Joshua Ekbe. He was a final year student of the University of Port Harcourt at the time of the unfortunate incident of the ALO students, uh, um, the Uniport students thing, now popularly called ALO 4. And that was in 2012, at about October. Now what happened is that here is a young man who was arrested from the number that the police themselves admitted 
if you see the proof of information which is filed in court, the police witnesses who are police officers themselves, I mean the prosecution witnesses who are police officers themselves, stated that on the day of that incident, there were not less than two to 3,000 individuals at the site. Let's say, commencing from the early hours of the morning, I think about um, 4 or 5 a.m. thereabout, when these young men were apprehended and were being paraded around the uh, Omuokere, Alua community, until they were, um, unfortunately, they met their death at the borough pit somewhere in the same Alua community. There were not less than two to 3,000 people. But how come there are only about 12 persons standing trial? Where are the others? If there were hundreds of people, it was clearly a mob action. And how do you identify them? We understand from the prosecution that they had to, certain persons took photographs of the, of the events at the material time they were taking place and uploaded them on YouTube, I mean onto YouTube. And the police themselves said they were able to identify most of these individuals from the uh, photographs they saw on YouTube. Now, if you saw just a few persons, where are the hundreds of other people? Getting to know about it took a little while because when it happened, nobody informed us immediately. People were running around the area until we got... By the time we heard about it, it, was, it happened very early in the morning. By the time we heard about it, it was almost about uh, 9 a.m. in the morning. And so that was the initial problem we faced. But once we got to know that four of our students were murdered in such a, in a gruesome, uh, gruesome situation, we engaged the relevant agencies, the police, the government, Federal Ministry of Education, National Universities Commission, and other federal government agencies responsible. I regret it. I will never send my other boys or my, any of my relation to that school. I won't. Because the school authority will have done something too. I mean, you hear your students, your pupils are being beaten up. It's this. You couldn't do anything. For friends and former classmates of the slain undergraduates, they vow to remain friends and never forget them, especially because of the circumstances that led to their death. As students, uh, the best we can do, we could do as of then, and was to to bring the whole thing to the public domain and because it was an heinous act. Uh, what we did was that we, we, we used the media effectively in, in asking that uh, such barbaric act that was committed in such in that community, or more clear to be precise, and that those who were involved in the killing of those four promising youngsters uh, should be brought to justice. And thereafter, we have been, I have been, as a person, I have been also following up the matter in the court. We cannot bring back to life these young ones that have been killed. But what we could do is that to bring up an advocacy uh, to prevent such occurrence of this uh, magnitude again uh, around the vicinities of the uh, University of Portacot or anywhere, uh, any, um, elsewhere. Uh, you see, because when, when you fail to speak up against um, uh, such act, uh, it, cost, it could also be replicated in, in other schools. We are very satisfied when the, even the IG went on air and said that these boys were innocent. That they were innocent, they were not thieves, they were not cultists, they didn't go to steal anything. As a matter of fact, I was personally there to carry their dead bodies, their lifeless bodies to the ambulance. I didn't see any evidence, you know, as laptop or phone. I didn't see anything. But what about the phones of the boys? I mean, the phones they were carrying. I didn't see any of them too. So who was the thief? The community, the vigilante, or the boys? I don't know. He wanted to finish school early, get married early. He wanted to get married early, you know. <laughs> You know, I like to walk. When I walk around the house, I say, Mommy, you walk too much. Don't worry. You know, when I finish, you know, you know, when I finish, when I am through, everything will be fine. You won't have to be, you know, stressing yourself all that because it's like our life. You know, it's like, and at his age, 18, he, year two in the university. He was where he was he's supposed to be. I mean, 
he never disappointed us. He, he was moving. He was doing very well. He was very bright, very intelligent. He could, he could look at you and, and, and make a portrait of you as you're sitting down there. You know, when he, he, was, he, he was doing music, we didn't know because he was we were like, we were, we were always tell him, focus on your studies, no side attractions. You see, when he comes, he's in the house, he is in his ear, he's always listening to music all the time. If he's, he's moving around, he's listening to music. You know? <laughs> they are dead and they are gone. Never given the chance to speak for themselves, never given the chance to, to defend themselves, never given the chance to even face justice as to know uh, uh, what may have you know, come out should they have been arraigned before a court of law. Kisses on my cheek. I add things together. <laughs> He's asking for hundred and all the time for for air time. <laughs> Every time he doesn't ask more than hundred naira. You say, "Mommy, buy me air time." What do you do with it? <laughs> okay, now just buy me on the night. One by one, from Ugona to Chiadeka, Lloyd to Tekena, right here, like a sheep led before slaughter, they fell to the cold hands of angry youth of Omokri. Although the town will be deserted and the case still in court, the affected parents pray that justice is served in time so that the dead can finally rest in peace. On down. Carry that side, carry that side. Carry. Father of the boy, please go near the grave. Oration. Okay, stay clear, please. Step aside. Oration. Your mother and I love you so very much. Please stop this. I so very much. You wanted to leave. You actually wanted to leave. But nothing wanted like that. That's the Lord. Lloyd, we have handed everything into the hands of God. May your soul rest peacefully. The Alo community is waiting for justice to be served. But the fact remains that the four young men brutally murdered here can never be brought back. It is impossible to document in this report all the feelings expressed by residents of this community. But I have composed this poem to capture their thoughts. Like the Messiah, they were accused wrongly. Like the Great Berlin War, they fell with heads bowed. With their hopes, dreams, aspirations all fading away, they were led like criminals in their righteousness. They were not judged, but were sentenced by the real offenders. They fell while they clutched on dreams, bleak, bleak dreams. If change is inevitable, why did Omokri chase it with wood, petrol and lighter? The social media is active, but in their time, death came calling for a moment. They waited for a savior, like their rickety nation. No one showed up. Like the candlelight, they melt away by the second, with their pride shattered, destiny unfulfilled, and their talent stolen. The Alu fall. They died naked, but were not ashamed. Feels like I stood there watching the pain and the brutal torture and added my silence to the violent screams of burn and torture. How do you earn this fortune or does it come unbidden? If life's a painted portrait, who puts dark colors in it? If there is a God in heaven, 
shedding, he's weeping now. As all the blood is shedding, as all these people drown. God help us all. Rest in peace, Chidi. Rest in peace, Lloyd. Rest in peace, Tekina. Rest in peace, Ugona. Now it's been more than three years and the people say there seems to be no justice in sight. The family say they will hold on to the memories of their sons and that they don't trust the justice system to work for them in this case. They wonder aloud and ask whether the sins of their sons were so grievous to have merited being murdered in cold blood. No one is answering their question. Meanwhile, the community and the school seem to have moved on. The family is a part of the community but will they be able to move on like the community? They express fears that the case will drag on for a very long time. Uh, join us again next time on TVC News Investigates. Thanks for watching. I'm Ni Uyilo.